So welcome everyone. Sarah here from Team Elevate and we have got the fabulous Melissa and we've got Deb, we've got Jane and we've got Kaz who are here to basically give you a little bit of a rundown on all the modes of the Thermomix TM6 and to really make sure you're getting the most value and use out of your Thermomix. So who here feels like they could maybe increase their use of modes a little bit more. <laughs> yes. Oh, one hand go up, Anne. <laughs> Don't be shy. Raise an arm. Um, sing out in the chat. Um, yeah, the whole point is there is so much to take in when you get a Thermomix, no matter what model that is you've got. Uh, 100%, we're fixing you, Renee. Um, Tasha's got the hand raised. Yes, the whole, the more you use or the more often you use your Thermomix, the more varieties of way you use it, obviously the more value you're going to get from your Thermomix. So that's basically what we're going to cover off. We have got quite a lot of modes to show you and I'm going to get started with one we can't normally show at a class, uh, even on um, Zoom, because you don't sort of think about the ones that take forever. But I have slow cooked some pears. So that involved me making a beautiful poaching liquid. And that was some red wine, some cinnamon quills, some star anise, some port, all the good things. Ah, uh, and that you cook for 10 minutes, set it aside. And then you pop in four peeled pears and they look a little bit like that at the minute. And we're just going to get those out um, because then we're going to strain the liquid to get rid of the cinnamon quills and the star anise. And we are going to put the beautiful poaching sauce back on to cook um, and reduce down. But to reduce it down, uh, that takes anywhere from 30 to 45 minutes. So we thought we would get these on. Whoop. Show you those beautiful pears first up. Oh, let me just add someone else in. Um, Jane, I might make you co-host as well, if that's all right with you. Excellent. Right, so in the recipe, we've just done that. We've removed those. We need to transfer the syrup to another bowl and to discard our spices. So I like to just pop a sieve over our another bowl. It's the beauty of two bowls. So how do you get another bowl at the minute? You buy a TM6 and you can add a spare bowl for $29. Or you may be choosing to trade up your TM5. And in which case you then, um, and then of course we had our blade cover peeler in the bottom. And you can see that's there. It has not roughed up our pears at all. They are beautiful. Um, there's no marks in them. You'll see those later on. So I'm just going to set that one on that. And then we're left with our beautiful poaching liquid. Oh, there's a couple of strips of orange zest in there. So you pop your syrup back in. You want to put your simmering basket up on the top so this sauce will simmer down. And we're going to pop that on for 30 minutes and we'll see how much reduces, um, but then we might pop it on for a little bit longer. So there are our beautiful poached pears, um, which is step one. Now we've got our sauce on the go over there. Uh, from here, we might just shoot across to Kaz, who's going to show your sugar mode. Um, and you can see a little bit more. Righto, Kaz, take it away. Thanks, Sarah. Uh, so tonight 
I'm going to be doing a bit later. Well, next um, is the cake, um, a steamed cake in the Broma. But first, I'm going to show you how to how easy it is to make some caramel sauce. So uh, I'm going to show you the espresso caramel sauce, but I pre-did a batch of just a plain caramel sauce um, earlier, which is going to go in the cake. Um, but for the espresso sauce, espresso caramel sauce, I should say, I've got 250 grams of white sugar into there and then 100 grams of brewed espresso coffee. So I, this is just two double shots. Um which is, was about 104 grams. So um, I did leave a little bit out because with your sugar modes, you do want to make sure, and it does remind you at the start of a recipe, to be as precise as you can with these measurements for the sugar modes. And sorry, I forgot to get the butter out because the butter needs to be cold for this, and you do want the butter in one large block. And it does say that in the instructions. So approximately six by four by one centimeter, one large block to, um, together. And then also I've got one teaspoon of lemon juice that I'd already just weighed into that. So one teaspoon is five grams roughly. And then we're putting in a splatter guard for this, or a splash guard we are going to be using a high temperature with this so it's avoiding anyone being tempted to lift that off um, during the cooking process so our splash guards on we've got 22 minutes of the sugar mode so we just turn the dial to activate that and that's just going to bubble away and then we're going to come back to that but hopefully you can um, hear me I'm just going to sit this one aside on my other thermics which super handy having two we are going to start with the actual cake. So if anyone does have the Varoma Bunt tins yet, if you were lucky enough to get one when we had the sale, they weren't on sale, but it was when they were released. Um, we do have these magnificent rose gold Bunt tins. So we've got, this is the two litre one, which we're going to use in this recipe. We also have the 1.2. So they do nest inside each other, which is brilliant. Um, but the 1.2 means you can actually have something in the Varoma, like your rice, uh, and then on top you can put your Varoma tray. So by being that little bit shallower. So I've just freeze that with some oil there. So that's what we're going to put our cake in, and it's going to steam. So for the actual cake, we have nine egg whites. So I've um, Sorry, start back to the rest of the recipe. We are pre weighing in 150 grams, which I did before because we're going to add that at the next step. We're going to add 100 grams of my caramel syrup that I've made before, which I've just got 100 grams in here. It was about 110. I'm going to pour that into my tray in a moment. And that's then going to be the topping for the cake when we turn it over. We've got our butterfly. Now, if everyone isn't familiar, we do have a correct way of putting the butterfly in. Which we go to the left of the highest blade. So that way it won't pop off during your whipping. And we have nine egg whites. So you've got those egg yolks left over to make some um, pollen days. Great for the lemon and white chocolate lava cakes. And then we're just going to whip that for three minutes. And then after the three minutes, I'm going to add in the sugar. Uh, but while that's whipping, we'll jump over to Lingle uh, for what salad she's going to be, uh, whatever she's going to be making, should they? Uh, we'll be jumping across instead to um, Jane, and she's going to get the teriyaki chicken on because Paul Lingle has... Um, an unfortunate situation this afternoon so she isn't joining us we are just getting creative here and we're adding some other things in instead take it away jane and i'm just changing it up slightly i'm going to do the teriyaki chicken second if i can because i've already started my mushrooms so i'm going to show you the high heat function in the tm6 um and i'm just going to do some sauteing of mushrooms i love the high heat function because it's gives me an option to saute different things and boost up my food. But also, um, so both my recipes tonight are going to 
highlight that. So all we're doing is just a sauteed mushroom. It's good to add as a brekkie. You can add it as a side, mix it through pasta. As I said, I already just put the mushrooms into my steaming basket and steamed them with 30 grams of water on Roma for three minutes. I'll put the recipe in the chat in a second. I've emptied out my water, so I'm just going to add 20 grams of olive oil. And then add my steamed mushrooms. Again, because it's a high heat recipe, just like the sugar one, we are going to use the splash guard for protection. And it tells you to do that. So you don't need to remember these things, pretty easy. And that is going to cook for 14 minutes now. So we can thrive to the next person, Sue. Did you want to pop your teriyaki chicken on at the same time or is your second burning family dinner at the same time? Um, give me two minutes to move this across to the other one and then I'll come back if that's all right. That's all right. We will keep moving on. We have got coming up next Deb, who is going to whip out our egg boiler mode, uh, which is a different take altogether on using your eggs in your thermie. So take it away, Deb. Hi, everyone. So, yes, I'm going to use the egg boiler mode. And if you're like me, you can never guess how to boil an egg on the stove. It never cooks properly. It comes out runny. Then you ruin that egg and it goes in the bin. So this is the best mode ever. It's super, super easy. I'm going to do three and I'm going to hard boil them ready for lunch tomorrow. So easy. So into my bowl, which sits around the blades, go the eggs. You can do... You can change it on the screen. It'll tell you if you want soft, medium, soft, medium, medium, hard or hard. So whatever you fancy, you can do. Okay. And then simply we're just going to add a litre of water. So I'm going to turn the dial around to medium hard. Oh, hang on. I'll add my water first. A litre of water. Round to medium hard. And they are going to cook for 13 minutes. And it's as easy as that. No more failed eggs ever, ever again. I love it. And what's amazing is the blades don't turn. So you're not going to end up with crushed shells all in that bowl. Super easy. Eggs for lunch tomorrow. It is super easy. We'll come back to Deb as well. But like what I love about that, I mean, there's so many different ways you can do eggs in your thermomix. Like you can put them in your simmering basket. You can, if you're doing, you know, CWA, egg sandwich drive, um, you can also pop them in your big Varoma dish. You can put a dozen eggs up there and steam them to hard boil them if you're doing sandwiches and things like that. Um, but this fantastic way, you just pop them directly in the bowl. Don't dirty anything else. Uh, put your eggs in. Blades don't turn. How amazing is that? And then, as Deb said, eggs. Eggs on the go. Great, tasty snack. Really easy. I mean, never to fail again. So, it, no, never fail again. Um, Kaz, how are your eggs going from your dessert? I've got about two minutes left. Uh, so I've just added in the 150 grams of sugar and a tablespoon of the caramel sauce. So I've just got another two minutes of whipping. Excellent. And then what do you plan to do in your Varoma once you've got that caramel sauce done? Uh, so my caramel sauce that I'm making, um, that's then just going to go into a jar. Uh, I don't know what I'm, going to, what I'm going to do with that later, but with um, the caramel sauce I made today, it's going to make that uh, mullet of cake, which is described as a, uh, what do you call it, pavlova without the crust. So it's just a nice, fluffy um yeah marshmallow really i tell you what you can do with that caramel sauce you can add it to your coffee or you can run it you know two hours up the highway to me and i can put it over my vanilla ice cream i made today oh. uh, but we'll Perfect. jump across to jane then um what are you doing jane 
Let's get started on that chicken teriyaki that we're going to cook again using the high heat. So it's one of the modes that's in the TM6 that you, we can access. This is a great one for an easy, easy, fresh dinner. It's also one that if you wanted to make them bulk up so it lasts for another night or you're feeding a bit more, you could actually just repeat the first step. So we are just going to put in, I'm just making as it is tonight for four portions, 10 grams of olive oil, 250 grams of chicken thigh fillets just cut into thin strips. And again, we are going to put that splash card on with our lid. And it is going to start browning off and sauteing that meat for five minutes. As I mentioned, if you want, you might not get the sizzle through the zoom because unfortunately it cuts it out. Um, but if you did want to bulk this up a little bit further, obviously just do this step again. You can add another 250 grams of chicken because sometimes you always buy them in the 500 grams. You don't want that other lot sitting around. Uh, it's an easy way to just add up. This is a great meal that's served with rice or noodles or cauliflower rice. And it's really nice because it's also very easy um, to make allergy free. So this is a gluten free version tonight that we're doing. Um, so it allows for lots of different dietary requirements, which is what makes our Thermomix easier to do that to cater for different people. And so it is that... Allergy Awareness Week. So yes. if you've got an allergy, put it in. Tell us in the comments. We'll make sure we're letting you know which of these things suit all of those. So, um, yeah, it's a pretty easy fix when you've got a Thermomix to cater for any sort of special dietary requirements. So I'm sizzling away here. Yeah. Yeah. Kaz, we want to jump over to you. Sorry, I'll just take myself off mute. So I'm just pouring that 100 grams that I'd sort of reserved before of the caramel sauce that I'd pre-made into the bottom of our bunt tin. And then we have our mixture. So what happened before you had the nice whipped um, egg whites and then as we've added that caramel sauce, it's decreased in size. So beautiful caramelly colour in there. We just pour that over the top of our caramel layer in the bottom. Does anyone use the caramel sauce for Desserts would love to know. There's some beautiful steamed cheesecakes in jars. There's steamed mangoes in spring form tins. You can do little lemon citrus puddings in little uh, silicon egg cup molds. So this Roma bunt tin is really versatile. This one. Uh, my favourite will be the sticky toffee puddings um, in the Dario molds in the Roma. I do that one on the regular. Um, so there we go. I've got. Uh, it's asking us to clean and dry a mixing bowl. Rinsing it out would be fine. Otherwise, you pop your second bowl on your Thermomix and just add in 500 grams of water. And we just sit our Varoma into position with our lid on. And I'm just going to use my glider board just to pull it away from the overhead cupboards and steam that. So it's going to steam for 15 minutes. So... Um, the the bun tins are beautiful for steaming uh, bread. There's a couple of bread recipes um, that has the soup cooking underneath while you're steaming your bread. Um, I did one of those last weekend and it was absolutely delicious. Um, and they can go in the oven as well. So not only are you doing your steaming, but baking. Um, great for the pull apart sunshine bread. Yeah. And you did the herbed bread, didn't you, over the barley soup? Yes, that was the one I did. So you, you make a really simple pesto that's actually got sunflower seeds in it, so it's nut-free, um, and you make a bit of a twist with your pesto and your, your dough and then have it around in that ring, and it's just, yeah, you open up as you open the bread. It's just got that pesto mixed in through it. It's delicious. And then for our team meeting last month, we did a chilli con carne and we cooked a chilli cornbread up in the top. And the other night I did a sticky pork in the bottom while I cooked rice up in that Baroma bunt tin. So 
and you could have put, you know, your snow peas and your carrots and all sorts around that as well. So, yeah, really versatile use of that. Deb, are your eggs finished yet? No, Sarah, they've got seven minutes. That's the longest 13 minutes in the <laughs> <laughs> they say when you're waiting for something, it just seems to take forever sometimes, doesn't it? The washed pot. I can see there's plenty of steam popping out of James. <laughs> How are you going? <laughs> You can see the steam coming out of my chicken there, which even though you can't hear it. So I've got 30 seconds going, but I just wanted to let everyone know I've just started to pop some of the links that we do have the recipes for in the chat. Um, some of them obviously like our eggs and everything, we rely solely on the mode, uh, but I've put in Sarah's pears that she started with the sous vide mode. I've entered in the mushrooms and the chicken and I'll start adding in Kaz's when I finish this, but we are going to show you this first step of the chicken teriyaki, it's just finished. So you can, when the steam doesn't block my camera view, have a look at that. I'm just gonna get some of the caramelization off the bottom. Okay. You can see down the bottom there. Um, I'm just going to empty that into my Verona so that, that can stay there while I do the next step with my vegetables and things. As I said, if you did want to add this so that you wanted to cook a little bit more and not have any leftover chicken or add it for another night, just repeat that step again with the chicken. It only takes five minutes and it's easy to walk away and do something else while you're doing that. Depending on how long you want to, you want something to stay hot in your thermo, um, thermo server, you can preheat that with some boiling water like you would a thermos, so it'll keep it hotter for longer. Okay. Um, just going to get that last bit of the caramelisation off the bottom. And one of the things I love that goes hand in hand with the high heat is using the pre-clean mode afterwards for the browning gets everything off your bowl. The high heat in terms of being able to then saute food means I don't have another pan that I can just do it in my thermomix. I don't have that one that I've got to scrub or that sits up on the stove. I'm just adding 30 grams of brown onion. I've got... 100 grams of red capsicum that I'm going to put in. I've put a little bit extra in because that's what we had when we were cutting it and I've taken out one of the veggies tonight. It's a really versatile one. Mix it up with what works for you, what's in season and what meets your budget. So we've got 50 grams of carrot. And... I've left the snow peas out tonight. We didn't have any left in the fridge and they're out of season at the moment. So they're a little bit more expensive. I've added a little bit extra broccoli. So I've still got my greens in there. Sometimes add a bit of baby corn or something else. And I'm gonna add some more oil. If you are a tea and fire owner, there's the variation on this recipe so that you can still make it in your tea and five or your 31, but you obviously not want to utilize that high heat mode. So I've just put our splash guard back on and now we are going to saute off those vegetables. Fantastic. Righto, well, I might scooch over and show you yet another dessert because as my tummy uh, shows, that's how I like to live. Um, we are doing the sous vide uh, strawberries with a white chocolate mousse. So I have just popped some water into the thermi with some lemon uh, juice and I've got a blade cover down in the bottom there and we're just bringing that up to temperature which is 80 degrees for this recipe and then we are going to pop our sous vide strawberries in. So this recipe says 
to pop the strawberries cut into halves. Uh, these are quite large though, so the super-sized strawberries I've actually quartered, um, as you can see in that bag. But to our bag, we are adding four basil leaves. Now that's optional, but I've got it, so I'm popping it in. Uh, it wants a tablespoon of orange juice. So I squeezed that out just before. And it wants two teaspoons of maple syrup. So that looks like that, doesn't it? Uh, who has used the sous vide no before? Do you know how to insert your bags um, to get the sealing closed properly? So for a start, you need to use a BPA free bag. So they will say that on the box. These are just the snap lock bags from Aldi. Uh, but you can obviously use proper vacuum seal bags. I do have one, but I don't like to show it because most people don't own a vacuum sealer. Um, if you have the Thermomix vacuum sealer, they do come with little bags. You can use those as well. But you literally slide the bag across so you've just got a finger's width on the end. Um, and then you get the water I tipped out and put in the Thermomix. You just get a container with some water in it and you slowly submerge your bag in so that you're pushing all the air out. So just jiggle your strawberries so you can get as much of them flat as you can and press the bag in to get all the air out and then slide across. slide across the edge of your bag. So then there you have it. There's all the air pushed out of your bags. So that's your strawberries ready. When that timer goes, I will literally just be popping the strawberry bags in on top of the blade cover and they will cook for another 18 minutes. Now, whether you have the blade cover, which is the black version of this, or you have the new improved blade cover peeler. So this will peel as well as act as a skirt above your blades. They sit on the top of the blade. So you just hold them by the sides and you pop it on. So then it sits on the top and that should then be a freewheeling thing in there. So it just acts like an extra layer. So if you were sous vide say, for example, two steaks, you might just pop it in your simmer basket. Uh, but if you want to do, say, four, five, six little scotch fillets, you will want to put your blade cover peeler in so you've got more room to fit more steaks in. So it depends what you're doing. You can use the little skirt or you can use your simmering basket when you're doing the sous vide um, mode for your Thermomix. So doesn't matter, but if you have one of these, it peels your hard boiled eggs, it will peel your garlic, it will peel your ginger, it will peel your potatoes. Um, just depends what you want to do. These are a cracking bit of kit. They are a host reward and they come with a blade cover peeler ebook. So if that's something you would like to have a look at, reach out to your consultant, get them to pop on out and do a demo with you and two of your friends and they can do the sous vide scrambled eggs for you if you like. That's a cracking dish. You see some fantastic scones with that menu as well. So reach out to your consultant if you want to know a bit more about that. Who is next up? Uh, Jane. Oh, can I jump in? Because I've yeah. got two things ready. Our mushrooms have finished back on the other thermomix and my veggies are just about finished. So I'm just going to put... Literally, that is it with mushrooms. Add some rosemary, add any other herbs that you like. Um, they are done. And what would you do with those, Jane? I, I, in our household, personally, we like them for brekkie, but I also like to boost it up if I want to have something a little bit different, add it to a pasta, um, or you can mix it through with some noodles or anything else for a vegetarian option. But I like it with toast and, and eggs done in the egg boiler mode. Or... If we went fancy like on the weekend, we finally sous vide them. So they are the sautéed mushrooms. Fabulous. 
actually mm -hmm. get a nice close up picture of those for us so we can share that. Very good. Um, my veggies have just finished in this Thermomix. So you can see how lovely and bright and fresh they still are. They're going, to go in, they're going to go in with the chicken. Sorry, I should move my camera down a bit. And again, you could easily add some more veggies to it if you wanted to. I was going to say before, I could just eat a whole bowl of those mushrooms. Um, so delicious. Love them with a bit of garlic and butter. Mm. Okay. I'm going to start just doing the teriyaki sauce now. So I'll just show you our veggies and chicken are in the, our oval service over here, which is another host reward option. And it's just a different way to serve things up. I find it's a nice way to have the flat things or using other options too. I've got 10 grams of fresh ginger. I've got 10 grams of garlic cloves and I'm just going to chop those up. Who loves using their fermi to chop up their onion and garlic and things so you don't get that smell all over your hands? Yeah, you can't beat chop chop for literally two to three seconds of obliterating garlic and ginger, can you? And you'll notice this one probably went for that longer than two to three seconds because remember I've had a hot bowl, so it actually just adds that time a little bit so it gets up to the speed that you want, but still does what we need it to do. What have you got up for, Kaz? I have my I don't want to tip it over and tip it out but you can see that rich dark caramel color in there that's so good it's getting close to the edge though <laughs> is is so um I'm just going to pop that on there and add our 130 grams of whipping cream or pouring cream and you can you might not be able to hear it, but it's bubbling over when I um pour that in. And then once I've got that on, lid back on. Without the measuring cup this time. And just two minutes just to stir that cream through. That's it for now. Uh, our pudding's just, uh, our cake pudding is just about done. And then I'm going to let it cool for five minutes before I tip it out onto a serving plate. And then you do set it in the fridge to cool after you've turned it over. Righto. Jane? My eggs are done, Sarah. Oh, your eggs are done, Deb? Righto. My eggs are done. So here's, this one's still cooling down a bit, but I peeled one. And I'm going to cut it open. Look at that. Check that out. Yum. So eggs. You can sell it for lunch tomorrow. That looks so good. Yum. Delish. I'll go past a good hard-boiled egg. Oh, I'm tempted to snack. eat it now because I love a hard-boiled egg. Yum. So super easy. Lunches are done. <laughs> Morning tea, breakfast. Yep. Snack, snack, chomp, chomp. Love it. And it didn't fail. See, no runny egg in the middle. And I, before Firmamix, I, my eggs always failed. I had, even had the timers and they still failed. So, yep, love it. Excellent. Happy days. Off you go, Jay. Okay. While we've been, I've just added, um, some tamari, so we're keeping it gluten-free, and I've added some honey to my ginger and garlic that we did, and I've just got some gluten-free corn flour and water that I'm adding in. I'm going to make our lovely teriyaki sauce. So 
So you can save money. You don't need to be buying these things at the supermarket when you can make your own and you don't have all the nasties and things added to it. It's just going to cook it up to thicken it up. Um, and as I said, if it's really easy, really tasty and um, a great way to save some money for you as well. So I'm going to throw back across to you, Sarah, and I'll keep putting some links in. We're so showing so many things tonight. I'm sorry, I'm trying to catch up with the links. So apologies when my arm keeps going across the screen. All right, Melissa, do you want to show us the amazing blend mode? I can, Sarah, thanks. Um, yeah, so I'm going to be making our pineapple, spinach and orange juice. I know we're little rural country bumpkins, so we get a bit excited when we see the boost juice in the big city, but you can actually make it at home. Um, so I'm using, yeah, we'll be using the blend mode. What I do like about this is it comes as a two, four or six portion. So on the TM6, on some of the recipes, you can actually click in and choose the portion you want. So I'm just making two serves. Okay, start cooking. So it's asking for five ounces of fresh pineapple chunk. Um, that was about a quarter of a, a pineapple that I've cut up there. Um, it is in ounces because I'm not sure where the recipe is from, but it's great that the thermomix just adapts. So I don't need to know how much an ounce is. It still just measures in ounces as it's needed. Um, 11 ounces of freshly squeezed orange juice. Um, I didn't have any freshly squeezed on hand. I usually make it in the thermomix. So I'm just using two oranges peeled and cut in half. And that is 8.5 ounces. And I'm just going to make up that extra liquid quantity just with some water because I like a bit of a refreshing juice. And then we have one ounce of baby spinach. Great for the germ term and a bit of an immunization, um, a boost. And then finally, we've got two and a half ounces of ice cubes. The ice cubes add that to that ref um, refreshing taste, but also the, the ice cubes crushing around helps um, break up that pulp in the juices. I popped it in the freezer and they'll stack in my bowl. <laughs> Uh, then we just pop the lid on and the measuring cup in. And again, I think the sound will cut out, but obviously with the ice in that stainless steel bowl, it is um, quite a noisy blend, but the zoom will cut that out. And so that's why I like the blend mode. Um, on the other models, you'd usually get to the six, and so then it would say slowly increase the speed up to speed nine, and people would find that a little un unnerving with the sound. But with the blend mode, um, it's going to go for a minute. I just turn it on, and it will adjust its motor speed as needed. <laughs> And just for your fun fact, it is from the Hollywood Romance with Rob and Patricia Snyder collection. So it is one from the United States. So just remember if, um, depending on what you've got your cookie dough filters set to, you may need to change them to access those recipes. But also we have a cookie dough class coming up with Sarah on Thursday night. So if anyone wants to jump on and learn some more about accessing some of these recipes and how you add your own, that's a great one to get onto. Um, are you all right if I finish off with my teriyaki chicken here? Yep. Perfect. Our sauce is done. Just going to scrape some of that goodness off my lid. My mouth is already watering, even though I've already had dinner. <laughs> That's the teriyaki sauce. We are going to just pour that over our vegetables and our chicken. And it is done. This is quicker than ordering takeaway and fresher and helps the budget a bit more too. Look at that, full thermo server full. Once you toss over that delicious sauce, I'm salivating over here. Didn't cook dinner because I thought I've got two lots of desserts coming. <laughs> you ought to eat some raw carrot first. We've got to chop some carrots yet. Yeah? That looks so good though. And the teriyaki chicken. 
like Jane was saying, you can really bulk it up. You can repeat the chicken step. Or you could repeat the veggie step. You know, if you're cooking rice or doing a cauliflower rice, um, you can absolutely bulk this right out and feed quite a big crowd. So beautiful um, use of all that lovely fresh produce that Jane had on the go there. Um, Melissa, how is your boost smoothie going? Great, thanks, Sarah. So I finished blending. So, oh, sorry. Quick, pick my lid properly. Um, but yeah, I really love how it gets that frothy, fresh, fresh juice blend. Whoops, I was filling it, not with the magic of telly. <laughs> yeah, so this was the two portions. So I'll pull that out just so you can see. Um, yeah, I've given myself a bigger serve. <laughs> That's so good. That's the pineapple orange and spinach smoothie. Fabulous. And then with that too, like you could just use coconut water if you didn't want to use plain water. You know, if you had a bit of leftover apple juice or any of that sort of stuff, you could totally, you know, make that a real tropical juice. I mean, we had 300 passion fruits on the vine uh, over summer and the passion fruits have started sprouting again already. And I'm like, surely it's not the right season to be spitting out passion fruits, but she's still going. I could just imagine that with a little bit of passion fruit or another ginger in there, like yum, yes. Yeah, and and some people that have them all regularly for breakfast, they're often do little dump bags in the freezer, so then while your fruit's ripe and in season, just make up each of your little packs and you can just grab them quickly. Yep. Up. Dump bags are an amazing thing. If no one knows about those, just type dump bag smoothies into Google. Um, and within Cookie Doo, there are so many smoothie recipes. You can just type in smoothie or juice, and there are so many you can pre-prepare, do it, you know, for the whole week, throw them in the freezer, pull them out, and like Melissa was saying, just dump them in your thermi, add your liquid, blend mode, brekkie in 30 seconds to a minute. I mean, what's to complain with about that? Like, that's a crackingly easy way um, to have a delicious breakfast or a snack or a, you know, Top up at any time of day. Nice on the in boost. And so the blend mode with your soups, pumpkin soups, the creamiest soups with that blend mode as well, Sarah? Oh, yes, yes. Blending up all your soups. It's one of the simple things you just don't think about. But, yeah, how good. And as you said, it takes control over what's happening. It knows what's in there and it goes, right, we can do this nice and safe for you. So it just carries on. It's really good. Cass, are you waiting yes. for me up there? So that is my jar, and it was just over that size jar of that um, sauce. And it's nice and hot, so I'm just going to take the lid off. Um, I didn't want to leave the lid off while I was holding it up, just to let it cool down before I pop that I'm lid back on. ask you to hold it back up just so I can take a sneaky picture. Oh, in. sorry. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that beautiful, rich colour. Um, and at the end of that recipe... It did ask me to put in a litre of water and a tablespoon of vinegar, and then it automatically had that cleaning mode at the end of the recipe. So really handy. And I've just got that dirty water to tip out and give it a rinse uh, because that uh, leftover caramel in the bottom as you're um, scooping it out it does cool really quickly and gets quite firm. So popping it straight onto a clean is really important so that you don't um, get that hardening. Uh, but even if it does harden a little bit, um, that cleaning mode will get that off. Um, now, I do need to duck out to the other fridge to get more milk uh, to make the bechamel, but before that, I'll show you the pudding or the cake. I don't even know what to call it. Now, it hasn't risen as much as I thought. Now, two of my egg whites were from the fridge. They weren't super fresh, so that have may have impacted um, how much this has puffed up, but still delicious caramel sauce around the bottom. So I thought I'll show you before I do tip it out onto a plate. Um, so, yeah, I think... Because I didn't have all fresh egg whites, that probably didn't help because I didn't actually um, name, number what date they went in the fridge. With that <laughs> one too, Kaz, do you think maybe you could use the smaller tin? That that might yeah. make a difference. Although the recipe does say two litres. Bread. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but that delicious caramel sauce around the edge, just, I mean, I'm going to have to try not to eat too much of this. I was going to take it to work on Wednesday, but there might not be much left. So luckily Gav's arriving home from the airport in about an hour, um, so he can help me with it. 
Oh, he'll be like, come the mama. Thank you very much yeah. for that. So, so I'll just duck out to the, get some more milk if you've got something else to crack on with. Um, I certainly do have something else to crack on with. So very good. I have got a batch of beautiful vanilla ice cream. These are the Tobolo containers you can get on the mixture. The vanilla ice cream is literally using your manual mode on your Thermomix. So you pop your butterfly in, you put in a 600 mils of pure cream, put in a tin of condensed milk or a single serve batch of the condensed milk from Cookie Doo, a squeeze of vanilla bean paste and whip it for 50 seconds on speed four. You don't want stiff peaks, don't panic. Um, it does make the most amazing ice cream and it literally takes you all of 50 seconds to make this beautiful uh, scoopable ice cream that I made earlier today. So I'm just going to pop some of that in my bowl because who doesn't need ice cream with their pears. So I'm just going to cut one of our lovely pears so you can see. they look like and we have got a beautiful sauce but our lovely pear and our ice cream and then we're just going to pour over just a little bit of our delicious port wine uh, sauce so there you can see there is your delicious pears in a bowl. Um, that's using your slow cooker mode. The strawberries are still on the go. Jane, what have you got going on over there? I'm all done from this side. So I've ended up with our beautiful, oh, I can do, I, I do have more that we can do, though. I've got our teriyaki chicken and vegetables here. And I'll uh, do them at the end. <laughs> I can't get yours. I've changed my highlight somehow, so I have to do yours at the end. And our sautéed mushrooms. You're testing me too much moving back and forth in my camera from right to left. So, depending, have we still got time for anything else? Um, we certainly do have time for something else. We have still Kaz, got those want... sous vide strawberries on the go. Um, did... I thought if you want to pop on your hot chockey, I might I was going to. Yeah. use the cutter to show the cutter while your hot chockey cooks. How about that? Do you want Excellent. me to start my bechamel, Sarah? Yep. Yeah, put your bechamel on, Kaz. All right. All right. So with the bechamel sauce, there's a few different um, recipes. I specifically, or especially like doing the large version if I'm going to be making lasagna. Um, so it's 110 grams, so it says TM610 grams. Um, so to start with, we have our butter going in here, 80 grams of butter. And the great thing with the thicker mode is you pop everything in and you don't have to do your roux with your butter and your flour, you just pop everything in. So we have 1,000 grams of our milk. And a bit more. So great. Having two bowls, you can have one with your bechamel, one with your bolognese, and then crack on with your lasagna making. So I've got 80 grams of plain flour into there. And salt to taste, half to one teaspoon. And black pepper, um, I normally leave it out. Um, and then you've got nutmeg as well for a true bechamel. I use this and then add cheese at the end for like your cheesy bechamel sauce. So I skip the nutmeg. Um, and then we want to add our simmering basket on top while this is cooking. And just turn the dial to activate with that little jug on the screen. That's our thicken mode. 
and it's going to estimate how long it's going to take to cook based on how cold things were going in. So at the moment, it says about about 12 minutes. So I don't know who can make it uh, quicker than the 12 and with no lumps either. So you can get on doing what you need doing during that time. And while okay. before we cut back, I thought that's the bowl just tipped out. I haven't even touched that with a cloth or a brush from the cleaning mode after our caramel sauce. So done all the job, all the work for me. Love the pre-clean mode. It's frequently used. I'm going to jump on and just use um, the kettle mode and the blend mode to make myself a hot chocolate just to show off a couple of our extra modes on here. I've just gone into the chop function so that we can um, grate our chocolate and I don't need to remember how much to do that. I love that I can make this a single stir or I can bulk this up and make it as many as you like. That was just some chocolate melts that I've grated the chocolate up there. I have um, just used the scales earlier and measured my 200 grams of milk already in my mug. I'm going to tip that in. That's and I am at mug I haven't seen in a while. <laughs> oh, I, did, I, I did pick one of the kids' ones. <laughs> it's, quite, it's a little miss hug. Um, so I'm going to use my kettle mode. So over onto our screen. One of the things I love about the kettle mode is that you actually can set the temperature that you want to heat it to. So if you want to have a steaming hot one, you can send it to 100 or if you just like to have it on the go and go quick, set it to 60, set it to um, 70. So I'm going to reduce mine and actually go down to 70 because I'm not very good with really hot drinks. And again, once you turn on that kettle mode, it's going to do all the work for you. It's going to censor it. It will work out how long it needs to get to get there. And my hot chocolate will just sit in the background getting ready. Now, Sarah, I just saw in the chat for the ice cream recipe. Will that be something that we can just send out? Um, I will put the recipe afterwards. in the email I send out. So, Leanne, if Thank you register for the class, um, which you obviously have because you've turned up in here, then you will. I'll make sure it's in the email that we send out for you. So Kaz has bechamel cooking. Jane has hot chocolate cooking. Let's see if I can show you carrots four ways using the cutter before either of those things are different. Uh, what is that? What's the difference between using the So I just asked about the difference between using your splash guard versus your simmering basket on the top. The simmering basket is for when you're reducing things down or when quantities are quite high up in your bowl um, and if you don't want it to hit the bottom of the measuring cup. So if you're doing a risotto or something like that, you might pop your simmering basket on the top. Your splash guard is when you're using the high heat mode and your Thermomix will always tell you exactly when it wants you to use that splash guard or if it wants you to use the simmering basket. So, um, yeah, but the splash guard is specifically for the high heat, so you don't get any of the fat spitting out the hole um, because we're always, always tempted to look inside the top, especially when you hear it sizzling away and you're like, ooh, what's going on now? Um, yeah, don't pop your eye over the top of your thermomix. That's why the splash guard uh, is there. So, and it, and it locks it in safely for you, doesn't it, sir? Yeah, you can't take it off. The arms grab it. So hopefully that helps your question. Uh, this is the shaft on the cutter and it just sits on the blades on the top. There's only one way that it goes in and it's actually in front of the high blades, which is the opposite of the butterfly. So then you get your bucket and that just sits over the top. You get your blade itself. Now the dark side will slice and your light side will grate. So they say gray grates and slate slices, but uh, that takes a lot of effort for me to say. Uh, the dark slices and the light grates. Whatever you want has to face up. So if we're going to slice, I'm going to put the dark side facing up. I put it so that the shoot is close to me. I've just got little T-Rex arms. 
So I want it nice and close. We're just going to show you some differences. So I've just got a bit of carrot uh, that I have peeled. And I'm just going to pop it down. I want nice rounds. So I'm going to show you a thick and a thin slicing. So you come across to the modes, you select your slicing. It gives you some instructions, but you can just roll on from those like you can all of them if you've seen them all before. You can hide them away and they sit underneath the little eye. So we'll just do some thick carrot slices. And then I'm going to do some thin carrot slices. Now it does throw the thick and the thin to opposite sides of the bucket, which is quite handy. No lid detected. There we go. Thin. And with this lid, this replaces the need for this one. Um, so the arms still come up over and lock onto the top. So then there we have our beautiful thick slices of carrot. Get those out. And then we have our beautiful thin little thin rounds of carrot. You can see the difference between the thick and the thin. There's quite uh, quite a big difference. You can see through the thin ones. I'm just going to get those out onto the plate so then we can show you the grating. The lovely thin little ones. Thick ones over here. While Sarah's getting that out, my kettle mode has already finished doing my hot chocolate. So you can see the deliciousness in there. And because I like to make it extra frothy, I'm going to use the blend mode, not for a juice or anything, but to do my milk. This is great if you're doing coffees or anything else as well. It just gives it that little extra bit of air through at the end and froths it up straight away for me. Again, you can change the time that you're doing this for or... Um, it will and it will automatically set that speed for you for blend mode. So are you too quick with the slices? So I was like, I need to jump in. <laughs> so I have turned over the blade. Now you can switch over to the grating mode, but the mode actually only controls thin or thick. The blade is what controls whether you're grating or slicing. So I'm actually just going to leave it on the slicing and I'm instead going to grate some thick carrot for you. It doesn't take long at all. And obviously you can fill your shaft with whatever you're doing. You know, you could pop, for example, um, like 800 grams of potato in there quite easily. So... Then you have your beautiful long grated carrot. So I'm just going to pop over that. And then I'm going to show you a thin version. And the thin, I absolutely love for your rice paper rolls. Because look at that. Like they are just beautiful little thin tendrils of your carrot um, that are super fine. Let me just get those out on the plate to show you. But there are your carrots always. So thick, thin, thick grating. Thin grating. So hopefully that shows you how easy you could make yourself a potato bake or a vegetable bake, any of the au gratins. Um, we did cutter sessions, you know, 18 months ago now when they first launched them and we cut everything under the sun. Your cutter will slice up strawberries, avocado, pineapple, we did watermelon, um, kiwi fruit, <laughs> limes, 
are all sorts of veggies, beetroots, the thin shredded beetroots. Pizza toppings. Is beautiful. Yes, pizza toppings. You can do your cheese four ways. Um, yeah, lots. Do you lay the carrots down for grating? Melissa, I lay the carrots down for grating so I can get the lovely big long pieces. Yeah. So, but, you know, if you're just like, just shove them through the shoot if you just want short little bits. But if I wanted short little bits, I'd just throw it in the thermomix and then just chop it for three seconds, speed five. You know, like the old traditional beetroot salad or the broccoli salad that does that super fast, nice, even chop of everything. But like if you're after some texture, you know, you're doing a beautiful Asian salad or something like that, then your chopper can save you an absolute mountain of time um, using that cut up with the slicing or the grating. So there you go. You ready to pour out one beautiful hot chocolate, Jane? Yep, can you tell I'm ready to drink? <laughs> <laughs> so you can just see all that frothy milk coming out at the end. I'll get the last bit from my bowl. Can't be much better than that. I just love when you've melted some chocolate in your thermomix, add some milk in, heat and blend that up, and you've just got an instant hot chocolate, not wasting all that chocolate you've got left over. Um, or, Kaz, we did a, a different caramel sauce on the weekend to go over a different cake and made caramel hot chocolates at the end. Why well, did I not do that <laughs> Well, you'd already gone into the stage of the recipe, so I thought that that was part of it. Next time I'll do that. Uh, but Kaz, I did see there's the one of our modes that we hadn't covered yet that I know that you've got sitting in your fridge. Oh, yes, I'll grab it out. So I'm going to post. Because well, I forgot Kaz to get doing that, I will cover off our beautiful strawberries that we sous vide. So this is the first part of the recipe. So you melt 20 grams of butter, pop in 70 grams of biscuits and literally you blitz those two together um, once you've melted the butter in your thermomix. Um, and then you whip some cream, set that aside, pop in some softened cream cheese, um, some vanilla bean uh, extract or paste, any of those. Now make your vanilla bean paste in your thermomix because it's absolutely delicious. Um, and you whip those together um, to make this beautiful mousse. So within the... Um, white chocolate mousse, you actually grate and melt some white chocolate first before you add your cream cheese and your um, vanilla bean, um, and then you fold through the whipped cream that you've got. Um, and this has just been sitting in the fridge. Now, I these are the little yogurt jars from the mix shop, and I have got eight of these, um, all with the same amount. The recipe does say six, but their containers look bigger than these. Um, this makes eight perfectly which is good because you've got a lot of strawberries, which I have lifted out from the mix. Now, with your strawberries, they're supposed to be cooled down. Now, clearly these are not. So I will dress one to show you, but I'm going to let the rest of them cool. You want all your strawberries slipped in the top, this is the thin Tobolo spatula that you get from the mix shop. I'm just going to pop them up to the top because there is definitely enough strawberries to go around. And I'm going to get a little bit of that juice and dribble that over the top as well. Put those aside. But there you have it, one beautiful, delicious uh, sous vide strawberry white chocolate mousse little jar. These little jars come with lids as well. So I'm going to pop all these back in the fridge. Um, you can pop your little lids on them. They're a great make in advance dessert. Uh, the yogurt jars are really affordable on the mix shop. And if you've held your delivery cooking experience, you could have used your 20% mix shop voucher to get things like this um, or any of the products that we've shown tonight. Um, if you haven't yet held your delivery cooking experience, book it in with your consultant. Um, 
why would you not want 20% off at the mix shop? Melissa, you love the thin spatulas. I love them too. Uh, they get down into every nook and cranny um, and they're great for getting into tight little spots like that as well. So that's those. Um, Kaz, what are you up to now? You upturned that beautiful cake, yeah? Uh, I have, but I've got my bechamel sauce that's finished thickening there. I'm just going to add a few handfuls of cheese to go into that. Now, I don't buy grated cheese anymore. Uh, I buy I buy a block and I'll grate a block at a time and pop it in containers or Ziploc bags. Means it's no, no nasty caking agents or anything in that. So I just grate it and then we've got it ready for whatever we need. So I'll just pop that in there and just blend that together and it will sit and melt um, for a little bit. But I have those uh, yogurt jars as well. Uh, so got yogurt jars and I have topped my yogurt with some strawberry compote that I've made as well. Um, so I love the yogurt jars for making yogurt in, using the fermentation mode. Um, there's a couple of different recipes, but the one I often use is the little creamy ones. And the, in the picture, they're in jars like this. Um, and then I, after I've made my compo, I just pop it in one of the mix shop squeezy bottles. This is the medium size, I think. And then you can just use it to top whatever you need um, with that. So great. Got one ready to go. Grab it out of the fridge to go. You know, if I'm leaving for work early in the morning, I've always got something for breakfast um, there and my kids always love grabbing one out of the fridge in the morning as well. Oh. Uh, but, yes, the cake, I do think my eggs were a bit faulty. <laughs> Still delicious. It tastes like a creme brulee. Um, Still looks pretty good to me. But, uh, yeah, a bit of a flop, but that's okay. Still tastes delicious. Got that beautiful espresso. Oh, that's, this is the caramel one, but I did make that espresso one second, so. Yeah, I'll Sarah will to... say, you can't have everything. You've got those no. beautiful fresh chooks in your backyard. Um, so you're blessed with delicious, overly fresh eggs all the time. You're spoilt for choice. You wouldn't know what a three-day-old egg probably looked like. So, <laughs> um, you know, unlike the rest of us, we're buying them from the store and they've already been there for three weeks before we even get to look at them in the store. So that, my dear people, is a bechamel using thicker mode, the espresso caramel sauce using the sugar mode, a Molotov cheesecake using your Varoma and our beautiful new Varoma bunk tins, a pineapple spinach and orange juice using the blend mode, eggs hard boiled using our egg boiler mode, potatoes and carrots, or carrots, literally, sorry, no potatoes, we ditched those things. I don't have any in the house at the minute. Oh, we did carrots four ways, cutter, slicer and grater. We did our teriyaki chicken and the mushrooms sautéed off using the high heat mode for both of those. We showcased a hot chocolate using the kettle mode and the blend mode. We did the beautiful sous vide port and red wine pears using the slow cooker mode. And these hot strawberries with a white chocolate Oh, take a breath, Sarah. Chocolate mousse using the sous vide mode. So who here thinks they might use the modes on their Thermomix just a little bit more now than what they did before? I'd love you to unmute yourself. Um, talk. Tell us, what did you like the most? Does anyone think there's something that they will, uh, you know, turn around now and give a go that they wouldn't have before? Sarah, I'll just jump in quickly. My boiled eggs have been snapped up already and turned into curried egg sandwiches that Dave made for his lunch. He goes, I'll have them. Thank you very much. <laughs> You'll need to put another three on for your lunch, Deb. Yep. <laughs> I was just going to say, Sarah, that I the one mode we do use regularly is the egg mode because we have a little boy here who loves dip-dip eggs and... We always overcook them, and he said that machine makes the most perfect dip dip eggs I've ever had. So it's the that one mode so that good. I've mastered. The other modes, I'm gonna Not need your much. help, mate. <laughs> That's the 
all right. It's a work in progress, Renee. We will get yep. you. Does he like the dippy eggs on the soft or the medium? Yeah, soft? no, like soft, soft. Like the yolk has to run and it's even like my husband, he's been terrified to, to make eggs forever for him. And I said, mate, this is the program. One, two, three. And he's like, oh, I can actually boil an egg. I'm like, yeah, you can. <laughs> so, Fabulous. Yeah. So egg, like egg mode is just, has been amazing. But um, even just to know, I had no idea about the regulation that the machine had in itself. Absolutely no idea. So yeah, compared to the 31, I've been so scared with soups and blending. Now I know I don't have to be like do the stop and then yeah, it's it's so that's that's really good to know. It was a really it was awesome awesome um demonstration, guys. Really appreciate it. Oh, thanks very much for coming along. Glad you picked up some tips. Um, I'll answer Di from the chat. How do you peel the egg with the peeler? So you pop the blade cover peeler into the Thermomix bowl. You pop your hard-boiled eggs in. They need to be hard-boiled, by the way. Um, no dip, dip, soft eggs. Must be hard-boiled. Uh, pop in 600 of water. Set the timer for 12 seconds on reverse. Speed, mm, speed three or speed four? Might be speed four. Um, I will look that up to make sure I'm telling you the right speed. Um, and literally, it sounds like you are obliterating your eggs. But, you know, off come the shells, out come your eggs. Absolutely winner, winner, boiled eggs for dinner. Um, yeah, super, super easy. Uh, and look forward to seeing you at the Cookie Do session on Thursday. Any Cookie Do questions you have, please come on down, join the session. It's literally um, an interactive session. I will answer the cookie do questions you have. If you don't have any, I will start just taking you through cookie do. So, um, you know, come on down. Didn't realize how good the blend mode worked, Leanne. Blend mode. Froth those chocolates, froth your coffee of a morning, save yourself a fortune at the drive through, get those juices on the go. Yes, blend your soups. Yeah, many, many uses for the good old blend mode. Smoothies, milkshakes, thick shakes. The vanilla ice cream goes really good in the thick shakes with that caramel sauce, Kaz. Mm -hmm. yep. Another use for that. Um, but that's, I don't know, 11 or 12 different things we've whipped up in like an hour and 15. So I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, we're all going to pop off now and start tucking into a few of these things. So I'm just a little bit hungry. Um, <laughs> Oh, yeah, Melissa looks like she's got that juice ready to neck it at the minute we've got a picture. Um, thank you all for coming. We're going to stop the recording and have a good night. Thanks for joining us.